Howdy, Saints. Uh, you, you know, every now and then, and I got my camera pointed up again today because it's hot. I don't have a shirt on. Okay. Uh, it ain't because I'm out of focus. <laughs> uh, you know that there are times that I come on and I make a speaking on some comments, uh, some things uh, that I've seen on the social media deal. And today is going to be one of those. It's going to be a short one. But listen up. An individual told me, from the moment we are born of God, according to Scripture, and staying with the simplicity of the Scriptures, we have eternal security. So you know what this is going to be about, those two words that we don't find nowhere in the Bible together? Eternal security. Now, in this statement here, he is saying that there's, there is eternal security for those that are born of God. Uh, the definement of eternal security, let's, let's address that first so we all know where we stand now. Eternal security is the doctrine that salvation cannot be lost because it is kept secure by Christ. Since it's not gained by anything we do, it cannot be lost by anything we do. Now that is the simple definement of eternal security doctrine. Okay, so let's go back up here. In this statement here was evident. He says we have eternal security, which means there's nothing we can do that can make us, I don't like the word lost, uh, forfeit. Uh, so that's more scriptural. Uh, it's not gained by anything we do, and therefore it cannot be lost by anything we do. So here in his first statement, he said we have eternal security. Okay. His following statement. During God's calling for salvation, the slothful and unfruitful will never be allowed in the kingdom of God. What happened to eternal security? And I'll reread it again. During God's calling for salvation, the slothful and unfruitful will never be allowed in the kingdom of God. Well, we know it's the saints that are deemed unfruitful and slothful, not unbelievers. So a believer, hearing his words, Says if they're soft or they're found soft or unfruitful, they will not be allowed into the kingdom of God. That's our inheritance. Yeah, that's a portion of our inheritance. So statement number one, we have eternal security, which means there's nothing we can do to lose it. Statement number two, there are some things here that can be done that well, we would forfeit that inheritance. So, in, in, in these two simple statements here that the individual made, he called himself a liar. The second one says, hey, you lied in the first. You said we have it. Now, the second one says we don't. This is an individual that claims to teach. Now, y'all know I do not claim to be a teacher. I don't want that status because a teacher is judged greater than another. It says a teacher comes under a greater condemnation. That's judgment, a greater judgment. So this individual that says he's a teacher says we have it, and then right around he contradicts himself and says we don't have it because we won't be allowed in the kingdom of God. Okay, let's go on to the next comment. Because I learned a long time ago, brothers and sisters, I don't get caught up in this back and forth. I used to be the biggest copy and paste individual you've ever seen in your life. Oh, man, I had I had them foul temporary files on my face uh, in front of my computer, and when I needed one, I'd go open it up, I'd copy the whole dang thing, and I'd paste it. Boom! And, you know? I used to be mad at it, and, and God told me one day to stop it, 
Hey, he stopped, but he said, look, man, they have a Bible, you have a Bible. If you can talk to them spiritual, you can talk to them spiritual. If you can't, well, then they're carnal, and they're not going to hear you anyway. I don't give you what scripture you give them. Uh, so I don't do that anymore. I'll just, I buy out. I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make it up. I'm going to speak the truth on something, and, I, and I'm gone. I'm, I'm not going to bite the bone that gets thrown out later on. I'm not going to bite on that bone like I used to. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, you know, God told me a while back, and, and I've, I've tried to live up to it every day. They have a Bible. You have a Bible. Let the ignorant be ignorant. Now, ignorant means unlearned. It's, it's not a bad thing. Uh, uh, it, it shouldn't be as such, but uh, it's not a, a word that as many people today get offended by. And if they get offended, well, they're, they're there in the flesh. Uh, so let's go on on this third comment that I, I pasted and copied because I didn't want to misread anything or misrepresentation it's individual. So... This is just the, the last one that he communicated on me with. Because I just walked away. I'm not getting caught up in it. You always run, my friend, when the teaching gets deep. Well, actually, that's not deep. You say we have it. You don't. You say we don't have it. That's not getting deep. That's just getting ignorant. You always run, my friend, when the teaching gets deep. The challenge I give to you is to come to a place where you can teach all chapters and verses so they all line up. Until then, teachers like myself and many others will always make you look bad in teaching together. When you come to a place where you can teach the whole Bible so it lines up, pride will be that what keeps many out of heaven. No, then you become invincible in your teaching. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> you become invincible in your teaching. Uh, pride will be what keeps many out of heaven. The first will be the last, and the last will be the first. Now, I don't know what this got to do with pride. Okay. Uh, just something to think about. Here, brothers and sisters, is what we're really going to speak on. Well, I've been guilty of this in the past. It's called making false accusations. See, the brother don't know me well. If he spent some time on my YouTube channel, you know, I, get, I guarantee he'd get to know me. And and, and it, he would have said none of that. But here's what the thing is. There's a thing called false accusation. You always run. See, this is where God needs it. This is where God's taken me over the over the last few years. Uh, he saw it as running. I saw it as being obedient to God because God said, let the ignorant be ignorant. And when you present me two verses or two comments, like the first one or two I read, from the moment we were born of God according to Scripture and staying within the simplicity of the Scripture, we have eternal security. We know that eternal security is the doctrine. The salvation cannot be forfeited uh, since it's not gained by anything we do. It cannot be lost by anything we do. So we know so eternal security is a false doctrine. It's a lie. Uh, it's all through Scripture that we can forfeit our inheritance. Uh, uh, and, and even in Romans 11, uh, Paul tells us don't boast against the natural branch, and like you can't be cut off either. John 15 is very clear on the second Peter. Now they saw through scripts. So, when the teaching gets deep, you run. So, in the first one, we have eternal security which we know is a false doctrine. The second one is uh, the soft and unfruitful will never be allowed in the kingdom of God. It means they don't have eternal security, which means something they've done make them forfeit their inheritance. So, like I said, we got these two comments that are conflicting. They're like both they one side of the fence and the other. But then he turned around and said, you always run. No, what I do is I avoid ignorance as much as I can, especially when one like this, uh, 
uh, until then teachers like myself and many others. And he claimed to be a teacher, but his own words don't line up. So am I going to sit there and go back and forth with him? I, I would used to back in the day, but no, no. I said, let the ignorant be ignorant. Move on. And that's what I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters. That's what we have to do. Because in this, in this right here, this brother in Christ, whom I was polite and kind in what I spoke, except for I probably got a little hot under the collar when I read this and made my comment. Matter of fact, I'll go back and I'll read you my comment. Uh, since I pasted and copied his, I'll go back and read mine. But he said, until then, teachers like myself, uh, well, I would make you look bad. Okay, so we're going to get out of that. Uh, save it. There you go, because I don't want to get rid of it. Let me pull this up. And I will read you just for the clearness and clarity of everything. I will read you my comment, uh, my last comment, but I won't make no more of this uh, a thread. Uh, my comment follows. Firstly, by the scriptures you just presented, displays that there is no such thing as eternal security for a saint. Simply as what, and I'll leave this name out, has spoken of free will that destroys eternal security. Then why, this is why I don't speak such things on eternal security, because it, it wants no more in the Word of God. And that said, now I'm going to address you personally. So now, he, he, he accused me in public of running. Uh, how dare you speak of me as running? What you claim is running, I see, is not getting caught up in foolish and unlearned questions. I keep it very simple when I speak, and I don't leave out any of God's counsel. Uh, you speak of pride, and you are very correct. And right now it's coming out of your mouth abundantly when you speak to me as such. So this will indeed end this discussion with your own words. Uh, during God's calling for salvation, the slothful and fruitful will never be allowed in the kingdom of God. John 15 is Jesus teaching the way of God's kingdom and says that unless we bear fruit, we will be released from the vine. Hey, no eternal security. That's his own words. Uh, thus, no such thing as eternal security. My words now. Uh, those, no such thing as eternal security until we inherit our promised inheritance. And don't you ever dare make another accusation against me. This discussion is finished. Uh, eternal security doesn't exist, uh, for we can indeed do something that will forfeit our inheritance. Uh, and, and the reason I, uh, uh, I made a comment on it is, you know, I had to address it, and I'm, I'm leaving another part from the thread. <laughs> but this is the speaking today. This is what God wants me to talk to you about. Do you see how easy it is to make an unrighteous judgment? Oh, it's, it's very, very easy. Uh, I, I was guilty of it many times in the past. Uh, and, and the thing is, on social media, we can do it very easily because really we don't know each other. See, that's why I, I would pray people would come to this, this site on YouTube and they would they'd get to know them, Brother Anthony. They, they would know what I speak. Uh, in, in, in the word of prophecy, uh, oh, that's just God's word. I'm not a prophet. We all are prophets. All the sons and daughters are prophets. Prophets. I'm, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not just a man with a Bible. I do, however, have a heart for the saints. And I'm like Paul when he talks about demons. I, I hope God don't hold this against this individual. Now, that's not saying God's going to say, well, okay, but Aunt Nia, I ain't going to hold that against you. And no, he's going to have to answer for it. When, when we say stuff like that, that means that there's no bitterness, bitterness in my heart toward that individual. Uh, when Demas left Paul, uh, Paul had no bitterness with, with Demas in his heart for leaving him. Hey, Paul understood. Uh, <coughs> I ain't school, buddy. No, it's 20 miles higher than it. <laughs> uh, so... 
like I said, it's a little comic came up today, and I want you to see how easy it is to to make an unlikely joke. You always run. No. I don't run. I depart. <laughs> that's right. Especially when I see one that says we have it. And then in the next one says we don't have it. And then he's trying to teach. Uh, you, you, you can't do that. Now you can't do that. No, I'm going to part from the thread. Like I said, he's, he's just running. And that's fine. I really could care less what he thinks about me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I could care. Well, I'm about to say something. I could I could care less about what he thinks about me. If he thinks I'm running, that's fine. I'm all right with that, you know. Uh, but be careful on social media when we get caught up in a back and forth. We'll, to be real careful on what we speak, type, whatever you say it, because once it comes out of our heart, see, as long as it's in here. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's something we need to overcome so we, it don't be in here. But once it leaves here, it comes out of here. If it's unrighteous, I'm in sin at that moment. So we need to be real careful on social media. And I thought that these comments that I shared uh, would was a pretty good example on what can happen in social media and and give us an example like example like scripture uses that this is an example for you use that as an example to keep us from making those unrighteous judgments upon social media the truth be known we don't know each other I've got one little sister now, we, we chat a lot on Messenger video chat. Now, I have come to know her better than most everybody else I do. Uh, and, and see, that's the good thing at Messenger video chat. I really do enjoy it. Uh, but be careful, brother and sister, on this thing called social media called the God of this world. I'm going to tell you something. He will send somebody to, to buffet you. Now see how you react. See what's going on with you. So, hey, I love y'all. Always praying for y'all for the things that are needful in our lives so we can become perfected and one day, hopefully and prayfully, be accepted into the kingdom of God. Uh, until next time, God be willing, I'll see y'all later.